So today is the feast day of St. Charles Luanga. So the story of any martyrs uh, can, be, can be quite graphic. Uh, there, can, there can often be maybe torture involved, things like that. So we don't want to get kind of lost in those kind of details, but more see the bigger picture. See that what motivated them to do this and to stay, stay so steadfast in their faith was their love for God. So the, 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 the heart of any kind of a story of martyrdom is love for God, not oh, the, the horrible things that they endured. It's, it's similarly to the crucifixion, Jesus dying on the cross. We don't just uh, like meditate nails and thorns and scourges and falls and uh, pain and abandonment and all those kind of things. Uh, if, we, if we just meditate those things on their own, it becomes quite negative because <clears throat> difficult and tragic and horrific and all as the passion was, that kind of thing happened to lots of people. Many people died on crosses and were brutally tortured and that. But what made Jesus' sacrifice so different was the immense love with which he did it, this perfect divine love. So it's, we, we must never lose sight of, of the love at the heart of, of these stories. So Uganda, <clears throat> late 19th century, Charles Luanga was born in about 1860. And uh, there had been what they called the, the White Father missionaries. They had been uh, welcomed into the country by uh, King Mutesa. So King Mutesa had a very favorable relationship with these Christian missionaries. So there were Catholics, White Fathers, there were Anglicans and um, other Christian missionaries. And everything was relatively peaceful. Everything went well. Uh, large numbers of converts, churches, chapels, schools, catechists, the whole lot uh, started to spring up there in the late 19th century. But uh, King Mutesa did not last forever, as kings tend to do. And so he was replaced by his son. So we have, try not to confuse the names, there's Charles Luanga and the king now, be, the successor is Muanga. So only one letter in the difference, but okay, Muanga. Uh, so King Muanga is an awful person uh, who really, really dislikes Christians. Now, uh, one of the <clears throat> most prestigious jobs, if you will, uh, was to work in the king's court. So uh, the king would have his palace and have his servants and have his, as they call them, page boys, you know, the, to serve his, his various needs and all that kind of thing. Uh, so, as I say, under King Mutesa, everything was fine, but under King uh, Mwanga, uh, he used to abuse the boys. And Charles Luanga then, who worked there as one of the, the servants, he used to try and protect the younger boys from, from, from this, this king. And uh, this was eventually brought to the attention of, of the king that uh, there was this kind of plot to protect um, the boys from him. So he asked, all, he called all of his servants together <clears throat> and said, any of you who are Christian, stand forward. And so they did. They took a step forward, about 25 of them. And so he said, I want you to renounce your faith. Will you renounce your faith? And they said no. And he said, "It's just, it's just, it was just uh, uh, such one of those moments where you know the next words out of my mouth are going to radically change the rest of my life." Mm -hmm. so the king asked them, "Were they willing to keep their faith?" And they answered, "Until death." <clears throat> and so it was. Uh, they were then expelled from the court, and they were taken to uh, a nearby village. And uh, so one man was, was killed and actually chopped to pieces on the way and uh, it took him three days to die there on the, the side of the street, but nobody wanted to help him because they knew if, if they did, the king would know about it and then they would die or they would be killed also. So horrific kind of treatment. When they got to this place then, uh, Charles and his companions were tied up for seven days while the servants of the king's court gathered firewood from around the place to uh, burn them but it took seven days, so they were tied for seven days in the Ugandan sun, which is um, substantially warmer than here. So uh, you can imagine just the like, exhaustion, dehydration, uh, just the, 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 and then all the while, like they're preparing this scene in front of you that you know is going to bring about your death, you know? So <clears throat> very, very 
and just incredible faith in these people. Mm-hmm. Charles himself, then uh, he, again, I don't want to go into too many details here because we do have a confirmation class watching, but um, he, yeah, I can't go into, there's a lot of detail here that I, I, I isn't for, for younger ears, but he, he as they were preparing the fire, they, they, they half burned him and then left him there and then threatened him again, saying, look, if you, if you abandon your faith, we will, we will let you go. And he said, you are burning me, but it is, if, it is as if you are pouring water over my body. Then he continued to pray silently as they set him on fire. Just before the flames reached his heart, he looked up and said in a loud voice, Katonda, which means my God, and died. So again, when we hear these kind of stories, we're not just meditating stories of, of, of torture and pain and that kind of thing, but look at the, the, it's the incredible love. And interestingly as well, I think it's interesting for us as, as Irish people uh, as well, that, that they died also at the side of Ang- their Anglican brothers. You know, there were, there were Protestants, Protestant missionaries who died along with them. Just people who loved the Lord so much <clears throat> that they would not renounce him even unto death. Just in, incredible faith, incredible faith, incredible love for the Lord. So... Uh, when we think of, of our day, you think of the, I say the confirmation class now in Kappa Queen watching us, we think of our, our day, we don't have these kind of challenges. No one is, is threatened to, to arrest us or, or uh, well, unless you were a priest a couple of months ago. Um, no one is threatening to, uh, to you know, torture you, put you into, in, in, into prison. That's not being threatened on any of us. They knew what they were doing and they knew the consequence of their actions. They knew that by st- in that moment, taking that step forward, saying, I am Christian, and will you renounce your faith? No, I will not. Even unto death, we will remain faithful to the Lord. They knew what that would, would mean, because if, you, if you're a king in Uganda, sorry, who, who's going to, who, who are you responsible to? Are the UN going to get involved? If you, just, you, know, if you kill off 20 people, 50 people, 100 people, they won't even care. There's just too much going on there like this, so no one will ever know. No one will ever find out. So you think, like, I'm going to die, and, and will it even bear any fruit? Will, will, will anyone even know or care? Not that I'm doing it for glory, but does it actually make a difference? You know, if I give my life, will it actually make any difference at all? You know, if you're giving your life like, to, to liberate your country or to do something glorious, maybe you can see the purpose of it. But if it's all kind of so hidden and in some village somewhere lost in the middle of Uganda, who cares? Will anybody even know? And yet they did it. And yet they give their life for the Lord. And yet they spilled their blood for him. So, so often for us, uh, <clears throat> the little sacrifices that we make, they're hidden. They're interior. We don't, other people may not see them. Like, for example, our, our, our students joining us uh, on, on the live stream this morning. When you decide to pray at night, does anybody see it? No. Will anybody know about it? Will there be any kind of a gold star in your copy the following day? You just prayed last night. Well done. Nope. No, there won't. But God sees everything. God sees everything. And nothing is small in his eyes. Every act of love, be it martyrdom or be it a daily prayer, be it renouncing, watching bad things on the internet, be it uh, any sort of self-sacrifice where I renounce my own will <clears throat> in favor of someone else's or in favor of something better, in favor of God, anything like that. God sees it all. God sees it all, every little sacrifice that we make. So as you're preparing now for confirmation, we can be thinking, what Lord, what Lord are you asking of me? What do you want me to do in order to, to serve you better? What do you want me to do in order to build up your kingdom, your kingdom of love and forgiveness and peace? What do you want me to do? And it may start with, it will start with small things, but small things done with fidelity will lead to us being able to do the great things. So we ask the good Lord now to the prayers and intercession of St. Charles de Wanga and his companions. We pray, Lord, for the courage to stand with you and for you, whether it's popular or not. Amen.